Hello and welcome to another regulatory compliance training video from LexisNexis. My name is Michael Nelson and I'm the product specialist for the solution. Today we'll be discussing the issues arising from the way the alerts and the obligations talk to each other so that organizations can get a sense of through FYI alerts, prospective changes to an obligation, action required alerts, actual changes to an obligation or an organization's response to that um, obligation, and news alerts that capture the monthly updates that we make to the obligations registers themselves. On the left-hand side of the spreadsheet, you'll see a column marked URN. URN stands for Unique Reference Number. Every obligation across LexisNexis content offering in regulatory compliance has a unique number that allows you to not only determine which particular obligations are going to be in play by dint of using the responsibility for insurance compliance tabs on the right hand side, but also allows you to link prospective or actual changes made to an obligations register through the alerting solution back to the relevant obligations. We'll start off with an FYI alert so you can see what I mean. Starting at the top of the alert, you'll see that there's a code number. This allows you to do a number of things. The first one is when you're looking through the obligations registers to see what changes have been made, when it references an alert that talks to a particular change, it will have a code number similar to the one here, AML CTF 298. This allows you to be able to look back to the alerts that we've sent you to find out when an obligation was updated, the fuller context of what prompted that update. It's also a useful way to track the passage of legislation. For example, when a bill is brought to Parliament in Australia at the second reading, we'll send you an FYI alert that brings you up to speed on what the bill proposes to do and which obligations that bill will affect. This application is common across all of the jurisdictions in which LexisNexis operates. Then when the bill becomes law, instead of sending you an FYI alert, we'll send you an action required alert, but it will keep the same code number at the top. So you are able to track from bill to royal assent, and in the event the law is rolled out in a series of tranches, the milestones of each of those tranches. Then you have a series of informative fields. This tells you that the relevant module is AMLCTF. In this case, the relevant submodule is the reporting entity submodule. This is an FYI alert. The effective date lets you know when a particular piece of legislation might be taking effect or in the event of a call for submissions from a regulator, when submissions close. The next field tells you which obligations are in play. It will include a core and the related sub-obligation or related sub-obligations. And here are the ID numbers that we were talking about before. We then provide you with a link to the primary source material. We provide you with information in relation to which jurisdiction this particular alert talks to. We then provide you with a summary of the document in question. And at the very bottom of every alert, you'll find what we call the impact statement. Now the impact statement looks at the information that's caught in the alert and then provides you with guidance as to how you should respond to this information. The final field talks to related alerts. In certain instances, because of the way legislation takes effect, it may affect different modules in different ways. In this particular case, it, and a similar alert to this was sent out to people who subscribe to the sanctions module. So if that's an FYI alert that looks at prospective changes to an obligation, Let's now turn to action required alerts. Here's an example of an action required alert that was sent out in April of 2022. And as you can see, it follows the same structure. A code at the top, the relevant module and submodule, but you'll see here the alert type is an action required alert. In this case, the effective date was the 8th of April. And here are the ID numbers the core and the sub-obligation that are affected by this. 
In this particular case, it talks to changes to the Autonomous Sanctions Instrument 2222, the relevant jurisdiction, a summary of what DFAT proposes, a list of the relevant people who are now subject to sanctions, And at the bottom, we'll find an impact statement. It says, in this particular case, organizations must not engage, whether directly or indirectly, in any financial or economic transactions with any of the persons or entities provided in the list. One thing to bear in mind in relation to action required alerts is that not every action required, prompted by an alert, will necessarily result in a change to an obligation. In this instance, for example, the underlying obligation to comply with autonomous sanctions remains intact. But with the addition of these names to the autonomous sanctions regime, your response as an organization must necessarily change, in this case, not to deal with these people. And as you can see, a similar alert was sent out to people who subscribe to the sanctions module. The final kind of module that LexisNexis provides customers is what we call a news alert. And we'll look at one of those now. The news alerts that we send out deal to changes at a module high level, not necessarily dealing with individual obligations, poor or sub, but broad changes. When, for example, in Australia, the maximum penalty units for particular breaches of obligations our increase on an annual basis will send out a news alert that lets people know that we've recalculated those maximum penalties. Another sort of alert that falls into the news category is the monthly summary. As subscribers will recall, we refresh the content in the obligations registers every four weeks to give customers an insight into the changes that we've made to a particular obligations register. We accompany the updated register with a news summary. And again, it follows the same structure as the other two kinds of alerts, the module, the submodule, the alert type, in this case, news, the effective date. And these are the updates that were made to the obligations register in March. As you can see, it talks to the alert ID, what the update has done, the related obligation, and the obligation status. The alert ID on the left-hand side is only useful to the extent that you're ingesting our content through a GRC software solution. Otherwise, that ID number isn't available to people who receive the content through email from us. The impact is, of course, please review the obligations above to determine the impact of the updates and changes. So in summary, there are three sorts of alerts. FYI, that talk to prospective changes, action required alerts that talk to actual changes to the obligations or your response to a particular obligation, and the news alerts that cover off at a module high level any changes that we make to the content there. Thank you for your time. I hope this has been useful.